Hello, I'm Kara Duckworth, Chief Corporate Communications Officer for the USPTO. I'm excited to welcome you to our special Women's Entrepreneurship event. Time and time again, we see how an individual's background and their own personal experiences can truly shape the way they view the world. We often see brilliant ideas blossom into reality. At the USPTO, we want to be able to offer valuable information and resources to help encourage innovation and entrepreneurship. While women represent the fastest growing category of entrepreneurs worldwide, they are less likely to secure the capital and intellectual property protections they need and are severely underrepresented as business owners compared to men. In 2022, we launched the Women's Entrepreneurship, or WE, program to encourage women to bring their ideas to life. Our WE program builds on efforts to inspire and support startups and aspiring women entrepreneurs, connecting them with each other, with support, and with ideas for funding. We host a monthly WE event that features successful women entrepreneurs sharing their stories and local and federal government representatives discussing valuable resources. We've held 10 events across the country with more than 1,600 in-person and virtual attendees. Today's special event focuses on our important military community. Our panel features military veterans and spouses that embody innovation, entrepreneurship, mentorship, and IP expertise. These successful women have broken through barriers and turned their ideas into successful ventures. They'll share their journeys and show you the significance of IP protection and how it can attract investments, expand networking opportunities, and connect with mentors. Their stories are truly inspiring and I think you'll really enjoy them. Thank you for joining us and we hope you enjoy today's event. We are thrilled that you are here. My name is Jen Pilcher. I am on the recurrent team for military and defense, uh, but I'm also a founder and entrepreneur. So I've been fortunate to work with the USPTO team over the past six months putting together uh, this morning's panel, their amazing booth out there, and then we have another panel this afternoon. So uh, trademarks in, are near and dear to my heart because as a founder, it is so important to protect what you created. So we love being in a room of people that uh, get that and you get to hear from the experts. It's my honor to introduce Christy Whitaker and uh, she's a public affairs specialist, specialist with USPTO, but also a military spouse. So she gets it. And then she'll be introducing the panelists. But I mentioned to Christy that I'm actually going to read her bio because it's so impressive. And I think so many people in this room will relate to the journey that happens uh, maintaining a career and a family and the military. And recently retired or about to, spouse about to retire. So he, he is about to retire. Uh, yeah. Terminal leave starts December 1st. Woo yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, okay. after uh, 26 years. Yeah. Wow. So, I know. So exciting. And then wait till you hear this bio, what she's accomplished and continues to. Um, as an active duty Army spouse, so how many Army spouses in the room? <laughs> Woohoo! For over two decades, Christy Whitaker understands the unique challenges and opportunities that the military lifestyle presents. Christy's professional journey has encompassed various roles within the domain of public relations that has ultimately led her to her current role as a public affairs specialist with the United States Patent and Trademark Office. In this role, Christy is responsible for media relations, brand development, and contributes effective communication strategies for public engagement and outreach. Additionally, Christy oversees media relations and communication for the USPTO's military outreach initiative designed to assist veterans, active duty service members, and military spouses with the tools and resources they need to be successful in their entrepreneurial journey. Prior to her work at the USPTO, Christy was a morning show host for the prestigious American Forces Network. So you might have seen Christy on AFN while stationed in Germany. We have a celeb up here <laughs> from 2014 to 2017. Reaching an audience across five countries in the European theater, Christy had the honor of connecting and engaging with fellow military families on a daily basis. 
Her morning show won several awards, including the Keith L. Ware Award for Best Morning Show. Following her return stateside in 2017, Christy was offered a morning show host position on WFLY in Albany, New York. The show was consistently ranked number one according to Nielsen Market Ratings and was the first morning show in the broadcast area to employ a military spouse as a radio host. So pretty amazing. Christy leveraged the power of broadcast media to provide valuable insight into the challenges that military families face. In 2010, Christy proudly represented Texas as Mrs. Texas United States of America. This experience allowed Christy to inspire and empower women, share important causes, and contribute to the community on a larger scale. In her free time, Christy enjoys spending time with her husband, their fur missile, Nala, and cheering on the University of Oklahoma Sooners. So welcome, Christy and panel. Thank you, Jen, so much. And uh, I have to apologize for an extremely long bio. That's, uh, you know, I, I think we probably should. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Um, and also, go Sooners. How many Sooners fans? No? Ooh, we're off to a great start this morning, aren't we? <laughs> I just lost you. I lost the whole darn audience. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, thank you so much for being here. I am so honored to to not only share the stage with Charlinda, Jen, and Haley, but to share this room with you all. Um, I know it's full of military spouses, veterans, uh, active duty service members, uh, military spouse veterans, and I can't be more proud to be a part of this community. Um, it is a little bittersweet that my husband is retiring, but obviously through the USPTO, I get to maintain uh, you know, my place in the community. But, you know, that's the thing is that once you're in the community, even though you are, you know, your spouse may be retiring or getting out, I think you're still in it no matter what. It's a part of you. It's a part of your blood. So uh, for the last 26 years, it's certainly been an honor. Um, so today we're going to talk about women's entrepreneurship. And I want to throw out a stat for you just to kind of keep in the back of your mind as we're listening to these amazing young women. But uh, according to the U.S. Census Bureau's annual business survey, um, men have majority ownership share in 63% of U.S. businesses, while women hold only a majority share in 21% of businesses. So think about that. Men, 63%. Women, 21%. So we have to do better. And we recognize that at the USPTO. And so about a year ago, we launched our Women's Entrepreneurship Program. And that's to uplift women. It's a community-focused uh, program to where we can reach out to the women, make sure they have the tools and the resources that they need to be successful in building their business. And actually, no matter what, what phase of entrepreneurship they're in, whether they're startup, intermediate, or have been in business for 20 years, so that's why I'm so excited to have these amazing women with me, um, Charlinda, we have Haley, and we have Jen. And so I want to take a few moments to allow them to introduce themselves and tell us a little bit about your company. So Jen, let's start with you. All right. So I am Jen Pasquale. I am the founder of Pride and Grit, which services two brands. One is Pride and Grit Military, which is a transition support organization for military spouses. And the other is Pride and Grit Consulting that focuses on team and leader development with strengths as a cornerstone. So that's the work I do. Mom of two, active duty spouse for another 18 months. And then I'll be joining Christy and asking all the questions about what I needed to know. Tell him to get a job. <laughs> no, I'm really kidding. You got to go to work. You're driving me bananas. <laughs> kidding. Thanks, Jen. Haley. Hi, everyone. Good morning. I'm Haley. I am the CEO and founder of Torch Warrior Wear. We're creating more female-friendly uniform solutions. Um, we started in 2021, and I'm currently living in Long Beach, California. My, yes, my, my boo thing's over here, too. He's supporting me, so that's awesome. <laughs> boo boo thing. Well, shout out. <laughs> You know, he's, he's technically a male spouse, right? So we got to shout them out. They're a big supporter. So, um, yeah, no, really happy to be here and um, excited to talk about the journey because it's, it's fun. Now, Haley, before we move on to Charlinda, um, you were an NFL cheerleader for the San Francisco. Yes, ma'am. Go Niners. Okay. <laughs> See, we lost them again. There's no, no, there's no San Francisco <laughs> folks. Charlinda, or the Falcons. The Falcons. <laughs> okay. okay. Rise we, up. We, we got them back. We got them back. All right, Charlinda. Hello, fam. <laughs> I really, um, 
for me, this has been just a full circle moment because I, I started at the first MIC as a new entrepreneur trying to figure out what the heck do I do as a veteran entrepreneur. And I wanted to connect with people who didn't just understand what it's like to own a business, but understood the complexities of having that military or mill spouse experience and all the stuff that goes with it, the complexities that will affect your journey as an entrepreneur. Uh, I was the owner and founder of Mutt Sauce, the sauce for every meal. And since then, I still have Mutt Sauce. We're 10 years going strong with Mutt Sauce. And uh, I'm also now the executive director of the O-Taste Foundation. The O-Taste Foundation provides resources for food and beverage entrepreneurs. We're building one of the largest kitchens. It's a $4 million kitchen in the heart of Dayton, Ohio. So if you have any questions about food or beverage, or commercial kitchens, or sauce, <laughs> come see your girl. I'm also very humbled that some of you have gotten my first book, Rock Bottom Has a Trampoline. You'll see a lot of, um, I will allude a lot to Military Influencer Conference because I think that is what really helped me with my trajectory as an entrepreneur. And uh, of all my accomplishments, I would say that the greatest one is being the mother of David Dwayne Farrell, age three, born in March 2020. Congratulations. March 2020, that was oh, yeah. the beginning of... Where's my Hunger Games? Where's my parents? <laughs> Okay, we have the audience back now. Thank you. <laughs> um, so I, you you all have to just know how inspiring and motivating these women are. And so I just know that you're in for a special treat. So, uh, Jen, we're going to start with you. Um, now, as a military spouse, uh, a lot of times, and you and I chatted about this the other day, actually, a lot of times we put our dreams and our aspirations on hold because of the military lifestyle. It's a sad fact, right? Um, but you didn't. You jumped right in and started your business. Your husband's still active duty, 18 months left, right? Um, so why? I guess at, at what made you, what was that light bulb moment that you said, you know what, yes, I'm still an active duty military spouse, but I'm gonna jump right in. What was that, what was that light bulb moment? So it's funny because I was on a podcast like maybe 18 months ago and someone asked me a question which was, why do people who are in the consulting space not consider themselves business owners? And so the irony is that I had been an independent consultant for 20 years, and I had done that a lot. When I met my husband, I was doing that, and I had to scale it back for our lifestyle, but I was still doing that work, but I never saw that as an entrepreneurial journey because I had the client, and I'd had them forever, and so to me, I was, not, I was never an entrepreneur. And so in some ways, it, it, for me, it, having that history became... I think the foundation of being comfortable not having the security of employment from, it, from a, a direct employer. I already had that comfort, and so then when I launched Pride and Grit, it was really an accidental entrepreneurship because I just wanted to help in the particular space I wanted to be in where I knew there wasn't resource, I knew there wasn't support, and I wanted to stand in that gap. And so if that meant I had to be an entrepreneur, then so be it. Um, but it took a while for me to be willing to sort of take that on because it just, I didn't see myself that way until I started to see how others saw me that way. And then I realized, okay, I need to own this and I need to make this part of just who I am. So it wasn't, it wasn't easy or immediate for me. That's interesting that you didn't see yourself as that, but others did. And how did they relay that to you? Did they just say, this is something that you are to me? Or you look like you could take your business and just thrive? I think it was more like things like this when I started to participate in accelerators or mm -hmm. in programming and I realized, wait a minute, you're an entrepreneur, but you're basically doing the, yeah, not the same thing I'm doing, but mm -hmm. like we're doing similar kinds of things. I think that makes me one too. <laughs> so it was more, it was more, you know, having the mirror of someone else was kind okay. of what helped me realize, oh, right, okay, I need to redefine how I see myself. And I think it also... For me, it took me a minute to, to realize I sort of deserved a seat at that table, mm -hmm. both as a mill spouse, but mm -hmm. also as an entrepreneur, to say, no, I do deserve to be at that table, and I'm going to take full you know, access of those resources and use them just mm -hmm. like everyone else at this table is doing. That took me a minute, but having that mirror really helped me get there. And then here you are. <laughs> and of course, Haley and Charlene, I want to hear your thoughts too. Feel free to, ch to chime in on what your light bulb moment was. And even if you felt the same way, that you weren't sure that you were an entrepreneur, but others saw you as that. Yes. Um, well, my idea came out from 
a night out with some friends. Um, I had woken up late for work the next day in the same outfit from before. I know we've all been there. We've all been there. And um, I am just a bodysuit girl. Any girls out there that like bodysuits? Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, they're just easy, right? You throw it on, you slip it out, you're good. And so I was just like, wow, I really wish I could have this for my uniform. And so again, it was kind of like an accidental thing where I'm like, I didn't think that I wanted to be an entrepreneur my entire life. But as soon as the idea came to me and I started researching, I'm like, nobody's doing this? I'm like, all right, we got to change this. We got to make this happen. So yeah, just kind of came. It happened. OK, awesome. Charlinda? You know, anybody deal with imposter syndrome? <laughs> you know, yeah. that, that's been 10 years of that, OK? So my journey with Mutt Sauce was I was eating something. I was stationed at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base in Ohio. And I was on active duty. And I am the worst cook in my family. I was eating something, and it sucked. <laughs> <laughs> and so I called my mom. I was like, OK, I know my granddad. He served in Korean Vietnam. He was an aircraft mechanic. But he also made this sauce that my family ate since 1956. And we ate it on everything. And he had passed away right after I commissioned in the Air Force. And I thought they had taken the recipe with him. Uh, and when I told her, I told my mom, I said, it's missing this sauce. She said, come see me. And she handed me an envelope uh, with the original recipe in it. And she said, your grandfather, before he passed away, said to give this to you. And I tried to wait and see when the right time to give it to you was. So I'm like, what the heck do I do with this? <laughs> I can't cook. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I sought mentorship. And I, I walked into SCORE. The SCORE.org is a website. You can go free mentorship across the country. And I said, um, I just want to make a couple bottles for friends and family. Can you teach me how to bottle this? Give me, is there a checklist for that? And my mentor, sometimes people believe in you more than you believe in yourself in that moment. And when he saw it and heard the story, he said, this is going to be on shelves in grocery stores. Oh, my God, this is going to be great. And I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> this is supposed to be a couple of bottles. But I just kind of drafted off of his belief in me and followed the checklist. And that's how we ended up. So Mutt was my grandfather's call sign in Korean Vietnam. He was able to just like blend in with everybody and make friends during a time where, you know, if we don't look alike, we're probably not hanging out. But in his pictures, everybody was hanging out with him. Mm -hmm. So, and it was the sauce that did that. So that's why it's called Mutt Sauce. I love that. That's awesome. Of course, yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, Charlene, I, I want to talk a little bit more about that because, um, you know, your product is you, you, it was just kind of handed to you. And like you said, what do I do now? Um, so it sounds like you, you sought out mentorship. Um, what other research did you do? What other resources did you seek out, um, whether it was funding or um, advocates to help you get started to launch Mutt Sauce? Sure. Well, you know, my grandfather, he used to say, to say, like, keep your mouth closed and your ears open, you might learn something. So it, it was a lot of that. And you learn on active duty to um, be resourceful at times. Mill spouses especially, you guys are very resourceful. <laughs> I, um, so my, my mentor gave me a checklist. And he said, don't get overwhelmed by it. Because I was on active duty, and the first thing I said is, one, I, cannot, I will not be stirring a pot of sauce ever. So how do we make this happen with me never stirring or bottling anything? And he said, well, you're going to have to start out not at the cottage food level, which is at home, but at the um, co-packaging level. You're even going to have to skip commercial kitchen level and just be a manufactured product. So then we did the research on how much it costs to do that. And I just, you know, the research on manufacturing and finding the right manufacturer, he also helped me find peer mentors who had already manufactured products in the local area. And so I got a peer mentor who owned a salsa company. She said, tomato packaging is the same. You just, if you switch it out but there's tomatoes in it, it's the same thing. So she peer mentored me to get the first production. Uh, as far as funding, I had no financial literacy. I grew up on a farm in Tennessee, and then my mom thought, you know, I'm going to be independent, and I'm going to get us our own apartment, me and her. But when I got to elementary school, the kids were like, you're a poor kid who lives in the projects. I'm like, really? You know, I, she gave me a good life. It was a good childhood. I never felt like I was lacking. Um, but that mentality of uh, 
not having anything, my goal when I was in the military was I was going to save my money that someday I'm going to buy a BMW if I made major, I'm going to walk in there and pay for it with cash and roll out. Like, that was going to be a thing. I'm like, might even do it in my uniform. Like, so, <laughs> but he, my mentor was like, the $25,000, let's calculate your manufacturing bill. And it came out to around 20000 but then he's like, there's other costs with that first production, and that came out to $25,000, which is exactly how much I saved for my BMW. Uh. So I'm sitting there like, do I get a Beamer? <laughs> or do I start this sauce company that I have no idea what will happen? But I thought that it was a, um, important enough that whatever it is that you have this vision to do, it was worth investing in, so that's where the money came from. Well, Charlene, did you, did you ever get that Beamer? I think we all want to know. Drive a Honda. Oh. <laughs> Yay for that, right? Hey, <laughs> it gets me going. It gets you to point A to point B. Isn't that right? I love that. Um, well, clearly funding is, is a huge part of it. And, you know, you sought out the resources. And, but I want to touch on something real quick. You talk a lot about mentorship. And I think that that's something, whether you do in your personal life, your professional life. Um, so I want to explore that a little bit more. And I want to talk to Haley and Jen about some mentors that you've had coming up along the way. Um, so, Haley, what, who inspired you or who continues to inspire you? Who continues to be your mentor? So I think it's multiple people. And I actually have one of my mentors in the crowd, Mr. Vic Hill right here. Let's give him a hand. All right. Um, he works with the Bunker Labs in the LA area. And just joining that community has been so incredible just to be able to talk and work things through. So um, he's an Army veteran as well. So it's just nice to talk to somebody who understands and you know that space. Um, for inspiration, I would say my grandmother, she served 20 years in the Air Force. Um, so just another woman in my corner who's like, I wish I had this when I was in, you know, like just telling me that and um, just kind of pushes me along and gives me that like personal support um, and that guidance. And then the SBDC um, has been huge for me. A lot of free mentorship through like my accounting, um, marketing. Anything like that, I mean, it's really nice just to call somebody and know that they have my best interest in mind. So, yeah. Absolutely. Jen? Yeah, it, um, I, kind of like you, I wouldn't say there's sort of one person. I think for me, the collective of the military spouse community has sort of served as its own mentorship community for me. So there's a lot of folks in the room that are business owners that I've gone to on a regular basis. Your mentor sitting next to my mentor. Um, and so, how cute. <laughs> So what I leaned on is people who were a few steps ahead of me and, and had a little bit more experience than me to say, okay, I know you've been down this, this particular challenge. I know you've seen it before. What did you do? How did you do it? You know, what am I not asking? What are the questions I'm not asking about how to do this better? So I think the mill spouse collectively was really one of my biggest mentors. Leaning on SBA was another place where I started that was what really helped me break out of the military community and get a little bit more of a well-rounded perspective on business because what I found was that there was some, some limitations on the conversations I was having. I wanted to be able to really talk in, talk in a, a different way and that was gonna come from the SBA and from some of those folks that had been in industry for decades and had a different level of, of experience and understanding. So I think there's a lot of value in making sure your mentors come from a lot of different sectors of business so that you have that well-rounded perspective. Well, and I'm sure along the way your mentors have said there's going to be some challenges, right? I mean, challenges are everywhere in whatever you do. Um, and so, Haley, I want to talk to you real quick about um, some of the challenges that you had. And in fact, I want to share a quote um, from you that I read in an interview you did for Black Entrepreneurship Magazine. <laughs> your face right now. <laughs> What did I say? Um, and I quote, you said, <laughs> no, it's, it's fantastic. You said, be fearless in the pursuit of what sets your soul on fire. So I'm going to repeat that. You did say that. Sure. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, that's my favorite. No, you yeah, did say, yeah. You said, be fearless in the pursuit of what sets your soul on fire. So that tells me right there that that is an indicator that you've clearly had some challenges along the way, not just as a military veteran, but as a woman in entrepreneurship, but also as a woman of color. So can you share some of those challenges and how you overcame them? 
Well, I think we all have been in the boat of trying to secure funding. I think funding is a huge um, challenge for young entrepreneurs. Um, we don't have the experience, or maybe it's not enough time in business, or uh, we just don't know how to fill that application out. We're like, I don't know how to even go about this. So I think the challenge of just like the, the learning curve of learning the language, how to speak to people, how to go up to people and ask them for what you need and have the confidence to ask for what you need. So I've, over the years, I've been able to build up my confidence to say, if there's somebody in the room and I know they have, you know, they could potentially help my business, go up to them and actually say something. In the beginning, I would be a little nervous and be like, I don't really know if that makes sense. Or So just second guessing myself, so I would say that confidence building is like huge mindset as an entrepreneur. Um, I would also say the challenge of building a community, like building a new community in a space that it's they've never, they've never seen anything like this before. So of course we get the Facebook messages, you know, like what the hell is this? You know, it's like, well, you know, a lot of people, when they see something new, there's not going to be everyone who likes it. So obviously, you can't please everybody. So I think my mind has shifted from like, OK, the 20% who tell me that my product is crap, but the 80% are telling me we love this, to really lean into them and to kind of address the naysayers, maybe even be like, hey, look, you hate it so much. Try this product. You know, just kind of be like, just try it and let me know. Not getting offended by it, but just understanding that you can't please everybody. Yeah, Jen, I know that you certainly have had some challenges as a military spouse. Um, do you want to share some of those challenges? Yeah, the, one of the, um, I think one of the big challenges for me has been the mobility factor. So when I first launched Pride and Grit under the kind of the military arm for transition support, we, I then moved that company four times in four years. And so what I found was the ability to kind of gain traction was just so hard because, because then I'm the default parent and then I'm the one that the household is relying on to get us kind of set and established. And I felt like every time I moved, I lost six months. And so it was like, you know, I was on six months and off six months and it just made it hard. I, I, I often wonder if we'd been in one place when I launched it and I was now five years in, like where would I be? And I think it would be very different. There's things I might not have learned because those challenges help me grow and help me learn all the things. <laughs> but some, but, but it is, it is a, for military spouses, it is this kind of layer that we have to deal with if you're still active duty and you still have that mobility as just what you have to manage. Yeah. Well, that's, I mean, and I agree. I'm one of the people that believe that wherever you're at in life is exactly where you're supposed to be. Um, so I think, you know, just to talk about, you know, you're thinking about if this would have launched at a certain time, would, you know, there's those what ifs, but I think you're doing fantastic. I think you're all doing fantastic. So you're, you're you clearly, too, oh, <laughs> say women, uplifting women right here. So Char Charlinda, I want to talk a little bit more about Mutt's sauce. Also, did you bring um, some samples? I don't see any uh, jars. Mutt's sauce. <laughs> MudSauce.com. There we go. <laughs> um, so also, before we get into that, I do want to let everyone know that all of the women here have gone through the trademark process. Um, Charlinda, so you have this recipe that only was given to you. Um, and so you're probably thinking, wow, I'm so special. I have this. I, I can't let this recipe fall into the hands of anyone else because this is near and dear to your heart. So at what point did you say, you know what, I need to get a trademark. I need to protect this recipe with, with all my might. What, what was that like for you, and, and how did you learn that? Yeah, again, it was um, sitting down with my mentor and talking about what mattered most to, to me, and not just to me, but to my family, because it was important to, to me to let them know that I'm not doing this selfishly. This is for my family. Family is everything. Uh, that is my number one why. As, in, as well as legacy. And I wanted them to be involved in it. And so he said, you need to have a conversation with your family. You're about to go on a journey of entrepreneurship. And on this journey, they need to feel included, not excluded. And it is a one team, one fight mentality. He talked about intellectual property agreements, non-disclosures, non-compete. So he said, you need to have all these layers into this agreement. Every living person who's ever seen or talked to your grandfather about this recipe needs to be in the room. And you explain to them what you want to do and explain to them that um, we all have to protect this recipe. Uh, in the process of food and beverage, you can't actually copyright a recipe 
or trademark a recipe. You can do a the method. So maybe if there's a specific way you flip a pancake, you could probably copyright the flip, you know. Mm -hmm. But as far as the recipe itself, have you ever heard all the stories about Coke and Pepsi and how the, you know, if you're only working on one part of this, you will never know the whole thing. It's the same way. You have to physically lock it away or do trade secret agreements. So that day that I explained to them, 30 members of my family signed an indefinite non-disclosure and said, till we leave this earth, we will never talk about this recipe. No one will ever find out, so. Wow. Wow, that's, it. and I mean, that's just, that's amazing. So there's only 30 people out here that know that recipe. Awesome, that's fantastic. So and I, I will say too, when it comes to trademarks, you can trademark the name and you can trademark the logo. Mm -hmm. And, you know, losing my grandfather at, you know, a young age, he was my father figure. And if you've ever experienced loss of someone that you felt like you didn't have, you were robbed of time. He had stage four lung cancer. He got diagnosed when I was in high school. So he fought this beast for four years of college. And it had metastasized in his whole body by the time that he did that silver dollar salute when I commissioned. So I wanted, I, that feeling that I had is like, I wish he could live forever, man. I wish he could just be immortal. And I, I feel like in regards to the USPTO, the existence of the organization helped me immortalize my grandfather as his face and name being an American trademark. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. And that's something that no one can take from you. No one can take that from me because it's protected. And, and that's one of the things that, you know, just throughout the conference that we've talked to a lot of folks about is that it's one thing to start your business, but it's another to protect it. You know, you put your blood, sweat, and tears into a business, and you see this grow into what this, this fantastic organization and then what if someone comes along and says, you know what, I like that name of that company. I think I want to take it for my own. And they find out that you haven't trademarked it. Well, guess what? You, you really have no recourse at that point, right? So, um, Haley, I want to talk to you about Torch. You know, clearly you, you know the importance of making sure that you protect that brand. So what's your trademark journey been like? Yes, um, I started it a little late, I would say. Um, I went and participated in the Veteran Shark Tank p pitch competition. Um, and then after that, um, we actually filmed for ABC's Shark Tank. Um, and so there's no, you know, I, I just think when you get to that point where you're like, okay, we're just becoming more visible, um, I started to turn into more of a priority. I filled out the application, um, waited a couple months, and realized that there were some companies with similar names. And so that was like a big scare, because I'm like, oh my gosh, everyone knows me as Torch. You know, it's like, I can't, I can't change it now. And so I always recommend anybody like to be more proactive, because that, that scare is like, I have to rebrand. Like, that just is too much. Um, it's possible. Like, don't freak out if you're a little late, but like, you know, you are building a name for yourself. So we're seeking out coexistence agreements. Um, I have a lawyer helping me work on, you know, reaching out to these other companies. And yeah, it's a little, it's a little stressful. Um, but we do have the logo, you know, going through trademark the whole, op the, um, the whole process right now. But yeah, it's just something where I found that out. And I was like, man, it's, it's just something that I wish I was more proactive with it. But you're there now. So that's the important part. You know, you're yes. getting that protection now. Um, and that's exactly, oh, sorry, I thought so, we had a question. Yes, yeah, so Go if ahead. we have to rebrand and you see it as like Borch and said, just know <laughs> that that's us, okay? That's us. <laughs> Don't forget us. So look for porch, possibly. No. Porch, right, porch. Um, so Jen, uh, you also recognize the value of making sure that you protect um, your business. So, you know, is there anything that you want to add um, to folks, the importance, I mean, obviously to echo what Charlinda and Haley have said about the importance of protecting that brand, um, because you have quite a following as well uh, for your, your online organization. Um, what does that mean to you? What, is, what does it mean to protect Pride and Grit? 
It, it's interesting because as I've recently kind of split off these these two entities under this kind of Pride and Grit umbrella, um, I had to kind of look at that and figure out, am I going to be two companies? Am I going to be two different names? How do I want to do that? And and in so many ways, Pride and Grit is just who I am. And so I can't, I can't not be that. And so that became the moment when I really decided, you know what, if I'm that committed to that name, I need to make sure it's actually mine. Mm -hmm. And so then through the support of IVMF and, and their programming, I was able to file for protection a couple of weeks ago. And I know it'll take a while, but at least I know I'm in queue. But I think one of the, the I guess, pieces of advice I would, I would give is, is to start early mm -hmm. and to recognize how much support or how much protection you can actually garner early. Mm -hmm. So I had an attorney very early who told me, make sure you're putting your, your trademark on things the way you can and help me understand where can I use it, where can't I use it as just the TM and not the registered because there's still a lot you can do to protect early before you go through all those more official processes. And talking to an attorney is, is how I learned all of that. Well, that, well, we certainly have the resources available. Um, in fact, we have two trademark attorneys in the audience today. So um, we have Christina and Jason that will be more than happy to answer any questions that you have. Um, so I know that we're coming to the end of our session. Um, uh, so but be before we do that, um, I want to get your thoughts quickly on how we can do better as a society to encourage women, women's entrepreneurship. Charlinda? It's got to speak up and be available, um, be in the room. If you look at a room and there's no females, then walk in the room and be there. Be there. Awesome. Haley? You know, um, I was a dancer growing up and cheerleader. I feel like in women's sports, maybe there's an opportunity to speak more about how you can leverage your time as an athlete to, you know, become a better entrepreneur. Because I think I'm a great entrepreneur because of my background in, you know, cheer and dance. So I think it's like starting young and that business education and weaving it into like sports or like other things that they're other things that they're interested in. Jen? There's a quote I'll mess I'll mess up, but essentially it is, you know, one of the biggest best accolades is being able to have your name spoken in a room you're not in. Mm -hmm. And I think to Charlinda's point, if you have a seat at that table, find out who you want to bring to sit next to you. And I think that's how we continue to impact the, the success of women. I love that. I think that deserves. Yes. Um, so I do think we have a few minutes for some questions. I, I think you had a question, so I'll come over to you. So my first question was, what type of attorney was that? Was it a patent attorney? Was it a business attorney? Um, my recollection is that he did have more of kind of a intellectual property focus. Um, okay. It was four years ago, so I don't exactly remember, but I do believe so. Okay, so I really want to understand, like, is there anything for startups that you can think of that you wish you had known before that would have saved you time? Like, any lessons learned that you, you came away with that can help us who are starting up? You're going to get a lot of mail. No, like specifically, if you start doing your intention to file your trademark, or maybe you've already filed it, you're going to start getting messages, um, and it'll be a piece of paper that says, you, you'll incur, pay us $1,500, and we will make sure that your expired trademark, you know, that you don't lose it. Don't do that. Don't, because in, in a very small font on the bottom, it says we are not associated with the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office, and that is the only thing that matters, okay? So unless they are working directly with the organization, and the USPTO is not going to send you mail like that. Fantastic. What other questions do we have? No? Okay. What keeps each of you up at night? Social media. Um, <laughs> I have to create new content every day for my brand. It's a little exhausting, but um, I just am constantly thinking about how to connect and create content that's unique to my space. So thinking about social media, Instagram all the time. Jen, Charlinda? I'm thinking. Um, there's probably more than one thing. I think for me it is how do I provide more programs, how do I reach more people? How do I increase kind of the awareness of, particularly on the transition support, that's the place where 
Um, I really want to affect more spouses and really help them with the program that we have and figuring out how to reach more of them. That's one of the things that I, I probably struggle with the most and I kind of worry about the most because that's really the longevity of the organization. Um, I'll just take a life approach and say, um, this journey is a journey of self-actualization. Like, why am I here? You, you have the day you arrive and then the dash and the day you leave. And I want to make sure that at the very end that I have more memories, quality time with my family, uh, that I didn't spend most of it trading my time for money and stressed out. So that is where I'm at on my journey with self-actualization is how do I not trade time for money? And if I want to just spend a day with my three-year-old playing trucks, then everything still got done. Awesome. Okay, we've got time for one more. I'm going to make you come all the way up here <laughs> because I love your shirt. Oh, thank you. Uh, Haley, I'm a huge fan. I'm Janae. We talk a lot on social media. Hey girl. Um, <laughs> Janae's got like 100,000 followers. <laughs> 600,000. Hey, hey. <laughs> Excuse me. I love it. I love it. I'm so excited to see you. Okay, sorry. I didn't want to make this about me. I, um, I remember when you first started and I actually learned about your brand because you were getting trolled <laughs> um, because people were like making fun of the notion of a bodysuit, you know, the shirt that's in a bodysuit. And so I wanted to ask you, like, how did you push through that? Because that was really harsh. And I've, I'm a huge fan. You know that um, I love what you do and I, lo I love what you've created. But how did you push through all of that? Those mental models of like, how dare she create a bodysuit? And also, are you going to come out with a men's version? <laughs> I think your boo thing wants a men's version, right? <laughs> Didn't you say boo thing wanted a men's version? <laughs> <laughs> Woo, had a lot of comments about that, but I'm going to let that slide. Um, so, you know, Janai, thank you for your support. And I think when, again, when I started receiving those messages, it was very hard. I mean, I used to show Daniel all the time and be like, babe, look what they're saying about me. I mean, it's like really tough. Um, and then you start to just realize the people who take time out of their day, to write a negative comment about a woman veteran-owned brand that is trying to celebrate women, I mean, they're miserable. And honestly, I'm like, I feel bad for you because I'm living my life over here and making women feel amazing. And I know what my product does for people. So I just really genuinely practice a lot of empathy. And it's just like when I respond, and I like to respond nice and cheeky to, you know, something like, well, you know, I don't, I don't know. I'm, I'm more G-rated on social media. But... Um, you know, I just think you just have to understand that you can either focus on the negative or focus on the positive, and I just choose to focus on the positive, so. Awesome. And men's line, maybe 2026 or something like that. I don't know. We'll see. The they want it, I know. But the girls, the girls, we're going to develop more stuff for y'all first, okay? Yes. Awesome. Well, thank you, everyone. I can't thank you enough, uh, Charlinda, Jen, and Haley, for being here with me this morning. I, I told y'all you were going to leave inspired and motivated. We've had some laughs along the way. Um, but congratulations on your success. And I'm just so excited to see where you all go from here. Um, and all of you, in whatever level, phase you're at with your entre entrepreneurship, whether it's a startup, intermediate, or you've been in business for 25 years, I'm, I'm, I'm rooting for you and I'm excited for your journey. If you do have any questions, please feel free to visit USPTO.gov, whether it's about women's entre entrepreneurship, trademarks, our military outreach initiative. It's such a great resource. And of course, be sure to connect with the fantastic ladies up here. So thank you all for joining. Have a fantastic day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.